So here we are down in the fish room. We've got all my tanks here that I've been spending a lot of time in here recently, reshuffling, reorganizing, um, planning, unplanning, doing, undoing. I've mostly just achieved the mess. Yeah, I haven't really accomplished much, so I might need some ideas off some people. So let's start with the bad. These three tanks up here, you'll have heard me talking about them before. We had some killifish fry in this one. This was a mixed muck guppy tank. And this was the tank where I showed you I'd put my um, red crystal jerry, red crystal shrimp that I bought off eBay into here. Now, I went on holiday um, a couple of weeks back, well, a week ago, for about a week. I've been back a few days now. Um, but when I went away, these tanks were fine, and when I came back, they were all dead. Nothing in them. The only thing that's still alive in these tanks is snails, unless all the fish or shrimp are really good at hiding. Because yeah, I've been looking for a couple of days, but I cannot find anything alive. Um, I've tested the water, it's all fine. My parameters are fine. Um, never post that on the internet that your parameters are fine. Parameters aren't fine. My parameters are numbers. Um, but they're all normal for me. Um, no ammonia, no nitrite, very little nitrate. Um, we've got some pothos plant up there, which is taking care of most of the nitrate worries. Um, but yeah, I can't find any of the livestock. No, not even any dead bodies. I mean, there must have been 20 guppies in this tank. Um, and no dead bodies. It's just very strange. The only thing I can think of is that it was extremely hot in here, unusually. And although this is in my garage and it's fairly well insulated, whether it just got too hot for here and because these tanks are up high, they have got even hotter, heat rising and all that. And it just got too hot for them and then the snails have devoured the bodies. That's the only thing I can think of. But... Oh, I'm a liar. I found a shrimp. <laughs> well, there we go. They are just very good at hiding. There's one of the shrimp. How do we focus on that? Okay, so not quite as devastating as I thought it was going to be. So we've got one shrimp. If there is one, hopefully there are more. Just doing a quick sweep of the other tanks just to make sure I can't see anything. No. But before I write them off, um, I'll leave them a little bit longer, just to make sure. Oh, but well, I'm happy about that. I'm very happy I decided to make that video now. So, not a total loss, not a total loss. Sorry, well, I trip over everything that's in here. Um, so, on to the better news. Um, what we've got in here, so this is something that I want to do something with this tank, but I'm not entirely sure what. I'm really enjoying the fact that this is a, a Pleco tank. It's my bristlenose Pleco tank. Got everything from plain bristlenoses to albinos to yellows to super reds. They're all in this tank. They're all doing really well. They're all loving rearranging the decoration that I put in for them. Um, but I'm wondering if I can get something else in here. So I plan to do a bit of scaping and a bit of planting. I've got quite a few extra plants, but pickles just destroy everything, but we'll see how it goes. But I was kind of trying to do something with the wood and maybe change things around a little bit, but who knows. But one of the things that I was thinking of doing was we have some new fish, so over here. Not terribly exciting, but some more cardinals. I bought these off eBay, but the good thing about this is, um, we had a guest speaker come to our, my local fish club. I couldn't actually make the meeting, but he brought along a load of fish that I wanted to get, and these were some of them because he bred some. Tank bred cardinals are much better than anything you can buy in, in pet shops. If it's bred by a breeder or a, a hobbyist that's into what he's doing, um, you know they're going to be strong, they're going to be um, sturdy fish, they're going to last. And these came to me, so I think these cost me just over a tenner. It's for these 10 fish. And look at the size of some of them. They're huge. You wouldn't get them in a pet shop. Um, so they're just doing the quarantine in here and then they'll be going up into my discus tank. Um, but they've done really well. They're feeding. They've been in here, what, two days now? Three days, was it? Two days. Um, feeding really well. All looking really good. Looking really strong. 
Uh, and like I say, a guy came to do a talk at my local fish club and brought a load of fish. Couldn't uh, make it to that particular night, unfortunately, so I went on eBay and was just having a look and I noticed that he'd used some of the same pictures of the fish that he was bringing to the, the fish club as his eBay listings. So I sent him a wee message, are you who I think you are? And it turned out he was, and I bought his fish. So I got these, and I got these guys. So these are some epistogramma, so these are the orange flash cockatoides. Um, it's a sixth pair, sold as a sixth pair. Where have they got? So they're still colouring up a little bit. I think that's the male um, up there. I think that's the female. Sold as a sixth pair. I'm not sure whether it applies to these particular fish um, or particular apistos, but normally the ventral fins have some black in them or some very dark grey, uh, and that's how you sex them and tell what one's the male and the female. They've definitely been chasing each other around a bit, um, which looks like breeding behaviour to me, but I'm not all that experienced with apistos, I must admit. I've only kept um, a couple of pairs before, and this is my first orange flash. Um, so again, they've just been in here the same amount of time, they came in the same package. I just put in a little pot for them to hide in um, while they do their quarantine. But again, eating well, looking healthy, uh, swimming about, quite happy. Um, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is whether or not to make this a permanent home for these guys and try and breed them out. Um, because if we swing back round to the bristlenose tank, this I want to be a, a bristlenose breeding tank, but I don't want it to just be plain, empty, sterile. I know I would get better results from my breeding if I did that, but I also I, I like to, to watch them interact and move around and I'm wondering whether or not I can get the epistogrammas in here as well, because this is what this is a five foot tank. Yes, there are a lot of bristle noses in there. I have kept bristle noses with my epistos before in the past and bred successfully. I don't know whether it would work with all these bristle noses in here, because there must be a good 20 or so bristle nose in here. Um, but hopefully there should be enough space. If I put in a bit more woods, a bit more cover, a bit more planting, I'm wondering if there'll be enough space for few caves for their pistols to be happy or not but I just don't know um, I'll probably try it but if any of you guys have any experience of this and want to say don't be an idiot Graham um, by all means let me know in the comments um, this stuff here this is a courgette that I put in ooh, two or three hours ago I've already made a massive dent in that never come out when I'm trying to film here. There's one of the super reds over there. So I wonder if that would be a good idea or not. So what do you guys think? Should I attempt to get this into a kind of mm, half breeding, half display tank for the bristle noses and the apistos? Or should I just convert this tank over here into a, an apisto tank? and put in some substrate, put in some plants, some more caves and things like that. It would mean that I'd lose one of my quarantine tanks. Um, but I can live with that, I've got plenty more. Still over here, got the saltwater tank. I'm not doing anything about it, but I've really had enough of the saltwater. I just want these to go. I want this tank back, I have other plans to do. Um, some things in here. I did go through the process of moving all the guppies down here into another tank and then I've moved them back again because I changed my mind. Still got this as my shrimp tank, still millions of shrimp in here but these plants are not doing well at all. Um, so these, are, this is the dwarf water lettuce. I mean, they're alive, they're just a bit yellow, a bit peely wally as they say where I come from. And they're not thriving, I mean if I show you out of this tank That's the same plant. So I've not picked a particularly good specimen there, but as you can see, there's a nice long root on it, a thick root. And then these are the same ones, which are just yellow and weak and almost no roots. 
So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if there's maybe just not enough livestock to produce the amount of nitrates to keep the plants happy, whether or not it's the lights. I've just lowered the lights to see if light intensity makes any difference. The shrimp themselves are doing fine. Horribly dirty tank. Um, but hopefully you can see there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of shrimp in there. And some of them look great, some of them are so bright. So by all means check out the website, get some shrimp if you want some shrimp. Uh, this tank I've just started ripping out all the plants. And this is my rainbow tank. I mean this is another one. I don't know whether or not that would work, whether the epistos would like to live in here with the rainbows. This is only a three foot tank or four foot. Something like that anyway. I think I'll just like to keep that as the rainbows. Um, but I'm going to move this around again and do some different sort of planting. Um, snail farms, tanks of death, well almost, because that one's actually still got something alive in it. But I want to get this sorted, it's just a bit of a mess, I need to get on top of things. I'm getting an electrician to come in and put all this on a new ring main, so as I don't trip out the entire house the next time I spill some water somewhere. So, new day, um, I've made a couple of additions, or changes rather. Um, I thought the epistles were chasing each other a bit too much. So I've put in a few more decorations, a couple of plants and things, just to give them a bit more, um, a bit more space. That sounds weird, but it's a bit more space from each other, breaking up lines of sight, all that normal stuff, some more hidey holes. So they've got more places to get away from each other if they want to. Um, and it seems to be working, they don't seem stressed. Um, so another couple of days have passed since the last bit you saw. I think these are good to go, they're still eating really well, the colours are coming up nice and bright, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then over here we've had a start of the, the rescape. So, what I've basically done is just added some gravel just to give a different area because I had some. So we've got a gravelly side and a sandy side, taking bets on how long that takes till that all mixes together. But just bit in a few plants that I had lots of spares of, lots of bits of wood some more homes and hidey holes for the plecos uh, another hide over here and then i'm probably going to put the epistos in as well and put another couple of caves in just to spread it all around a bit um, just so as there's everyone's got plenty of space and i think they will have this is a kind of side on shot so there's plenty of area they might get some more rocks and some more wood to hide behind but i'm thinking that looks good so I'm open for ideas of anything you'd like to see me change around in here. I'm thinking of just trying to change the cherry shrimp tank up a little bit and maybe have cherries and guppies and maybe try and get some nice guppies rather than just the, the mutts and the mix that I've got at the moment and see if I can build them up in there. Um, obviously the cardinals and the epistles, they're just in quarantine at the moment, but what would you like to see in here? Well, first question. Question one, answer this in the comments. Is it a good idea for me to put the epistles in that tank with the plecos? Um, yeah, as I said earlier, I do want them to be breeding, but I'm not really that into providing the most sterile environment to get the greatest yield out of the breeding. If it happens, great. If not, not great. That doesn't make sense either. Um, I still want something nice to look at, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, any other types of fish you'd like to see? What else could we be keeping in here? Um, so that's it, that's what I'm thinking. Any other ideas of what you might want to see around here? Um, and I hope you enjoyed this little update, and I'll see you next time. Bye!